All right, everyone, it's time for Vermont Issues, video number 156. More attempts at unconstitutional gun control in my home state. The Democrats there are not content with the unconstitutional laws they've already passed. Phil Scott, the Republican sellout governor, the, the, the cuck-servative governor of Vermont, um, decided to cuck out and allowed some gun control through. But he blocked a few of the proposals, for example, um, some, of the, some of the additional red flag bullshit um, the universal background check part, but he, he did decide that it was okay if the Democrats unconstitutionally blocked people from buying certain sized magazines, um, namely over, I can't remember what the limit is, I think 10 bullets held in the, or 10 or 12 for a handgun and 15 for a rifle or vice versa. I can't remember exactly. It's, it, I mean, it's arbitrary, arcane, and makes no sense. It's not like you can't 3D print the same fucking thing for a Glock. Uh, you can. So that's number one. And then the other part was raising the uh, purchasing age for, I think, most weapons to 21. Now, a U.S. citizen is someone who has obtained the age of majority in the United States, namely 18. An 18-year-old is fully capable of exercising all of the rights enumerated under the Constitution. Not given under the Constitution, but enumerated, declared to exist. It is unconstitutional to block an 18, 19, 20-year-old from buying a firearm. They can buy it in another state with no problem. Apparently, that's not an issue. They just can't buy it in Vermont. Likewise, magazines that go over the, the arbitrary limit that predate the ban, which exist in other places as well, those are perfectly allowed. How the state of Vermont intends to actually check whether your magazine was uh, uh, bought thereafter uh, in New Hampshire or New York or something, remains to be seen. The second that a competent federal court decides these cases, it will strike these laws down. The Democrats in the state of Vermont, though, rather than fixate on the fact that we've got poverty in our state to tackle, we've got problems with low wages in some areas, underdevelopment, especially in the Northeast Kingdom, certain parts of the Southern Four, you know, the Rutland, Bennington area, some of the outlying areas outside of the cities themselves, Brattleboro, <laughs> the area between that and Rutland, We've got underdevelopment. We've got problems with attracting business to the state. We've got all sorts of issues in Vermont we could be talking about. We could be trying to make our state even more green. We could focus on green energy. We could focus on jobs. We could focus on planting more trees. We could focus on reviving the maple. Leaves. We could do all sorts of wonderful things in my home state. But our government would rather fixate on firearms. Despite the fact that there's no firearm problem in my home state, my home state's one of the safest places in the United States. The gun crime rate in Vermont that doesn't involve negligent discharge and accidental shootings or some permutation of suicide or attempted suicide is rock bottom. You're safer in Vermont than you are many parts of Western Europe where you've got basically no guns. So I would ask the Democrats in my home state, why is this such a particular issue for you? This, this is specifically why we have a Tenth Amendment and why we're arranged into different states. What is necessary or proper in a state like Vermont's not the same as what needs to happen in a big city. Vermont has less people in it than a lot of big cities. If they have a gun crime problem, let them look at unique and, and uh, ways with great ingenuity to, to look at the problem and try to solve it. We don't have a problem. There's no gun crime problem in the state of Vermont. It doesn't exist. Yeah, there's some more property crime. There are plenty of mental health issues. I'd say the biggest problem we have in Vermont is DUI. The biggest problem we have in Vermont is that it's really cold and dark and people drink a lot and sometimes they drive while drunk and they wrap their car around a tree or they accidentally kill somebody because our road system is improper. Our road system is inefficient. Our road system, our, 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 our you know, state-centric system doesn't work. We pay through the nose to keep the roads clear and to keep the roads clean. Half the time it takes years to fill in a pothole. That's a big problem in the state of Vermont. Kills a lot of people, including a lot of out-of-staters. They come to, to Vermont to be tourists. They want to see the trees or something. They go around a curve the wrong way. They don't realize it's one of the, the places in Vermont you can get smashed into, like the highway intersection up in South Burlington, like certain parts of the southern end of Rutland, uh, places like that. They go to these locations that are basically mayhem on four wheels, uh, or sometimes 18 wheels, depending on who's smashing into you, and they get splattered. 
they die. Uh, the state has a big problem with that. A lot more people are dying on our roads than are getting shot in the state of Vermont. Most of the gun owners in Vermont are hunting or sport shooting or just plinking. I do some of that in the backyard. I have a little target set up in the garden. Now I, I have my little Glock with me uh, and, and a 22, and, and I play around with these, and it's fun. I'm not attempting to shoot any living thing. I've set it up properly so that the people around me aren't at risk. I, I take proper precautions. I keep my firearms maintained. I keep them clean. I make sure they're orderly. I make sure to check that whether they're loaded or not before I'm handling them in certain ways. I don't fire if there's anything within my field of view that's moving that I don't want to hit. Because I'm a competent individual, and most Vermonters are competent. We're a rural state. Most people in Vermont that own firearms are competent to utilize them because they do hunt. They do sports shoot. They do plank in their backyard. They understand their, their daddy and mama told them about gun safety. The people of my home state aren't babies. We don't need to be babied by the Democrats in Congress. What we need is for you to focus on trying to bring jobs into the state. Trying to fix our road system. Why don't you go back to debating about Amtrak and whether you want to connect from Burlington to Rutland like you've been talking about for the last two fucking decades? Why don't you take money and spend it on something that matters? And why doesn't Phil Scott get some balls? Why doesn't Phil Scott fucking grow up and tell the Democrats he's just going to veto it anyway? Stand up for the people of Vermont. Tell these people to do something that matters or not do anything. Because our state is orderly and works well enough that you don't even need to. Yeah, well, we got problems. DUI, bad roads, low wages, lack of jobs in certain parts of Vermont. There is poverty along the spine of the Green Mountains. Yes, there are people, retirees and shit, that live on cat food. These are problems. But by and large, even despite all of that, trust me, having lived in, in the Tampa area and other parts of the country, the problems that we face as a state in Vermont are minuscule compared to the problems in a lot of, part of uh, parts of the United States. We are pretty well off. It would be better to do nothing than to tinker for no reason. There's no gun crime problem in my home state. It doesn't exist. Attempting to pass more and more legislation this is common sense gun control, will just lead to passing more later because the new common sense gun control you passed will never make a difference. It won't stop any crimes. It won't save lives. That's a fucking bullshit myth. It's just a myth. Vermont had no considerable gun control for a very, very long time, and yet its gun crime rate has always been low. Why exactly was it deemed necessary to pass sweeping new gun control when there wasn't a crime problem? Especially when you look at national statistics. The gun crime epidemic in the U.S. took place from the 70s through the 1990s. After the 2000s, roughly around the mid-90s to late 90s, two things happen. USSR collapses, bringing forth a totally new paradigm in the West. That's one thing. And the Internet is developed, number two, taking up more and more people's time. It's hard to shoot people when you're too busy shitposting. These two things contributed to the greatest reduction in firearm and indeed all violent crime U.S.-wide outside of a handful of cities than anything else in our history. No law has come close. In fact, this period of relative peace in which the gun crime rate drops coincides with the mass reduction of gun control. Gun control peaked in the 1990s. Since then, it has gone down and down and down and down. The only other thing you can possibly say uh, had an effect was certain tough-on-crime laws in the inner cities. Because that's where most of the gun crime happens anyway, and it involves handguns. Most of the gun crime in the United States that isn't suicide or accidental in some manner involves small handguns that are definitely legal under all state laws that currently exist because the whole point is for them to be easily concealed. You're meant to walk up to the person, blow them away, take their wallet, and leave so that you don't get identified. That's why gang members tend to wear baggy clothes, because they're hiding the handgun. They don't want anyone to notice that they have it until they pull it out. They're not carrying an AR-15. They're not carrying a shotgun. They're not trying to carry a 50-round a, a drum magazine in their Glock. That's stupid. It wouldn't make any sense, because it defeats the whole purpose. The random psychopath who does get the assault weapon and go on a spree, that doesn't really happen in Vermont. It just doesn't. Yeah, maybe we're, maybe we're just better the way that we've been doing things, and part of that has been we understood we don't need a lot of gun control. No, we need a good educational system and good mental health system. Focus on those and you can eliminate half the gun crimes anyway.
That includes a lot of the mass shooters. Let people know, hey, you know, society is not going to just continuously bully and beat you down from the day that you're born because, you, I don't know, you have ADHD or something. Maybe you'd have less school shooters, dude. Maybe if you treated people with more respect instead of focusing on the gun, the tool. It's like saying, well, we're going to stop poisonings. We're going to ban poison. Well, have you ever asked why people poison each other? No, of course not, because that's a, big, that's a big issue. That requires a complex solution. That requires thinking abilities. That requires admitting that, in part, it's society's fault. But it's easier to just blame the gun now, isn't it? A simplistic uh, a solution for a simplistic population that can't wrap their heads around big issues. This is why our politics have devolved into a bunch of empty sloganeering, Phil Scott. That's why all you do is sit there and make vague promises and, and, and KG, go to the brewery and drink a beer. Huzzah, huzzah, let's vote for him. Because he, he drank a beer. Wow, so wonderful. Same idiot who dragged his heels on marijuana legalization for months. Oh, I, th I think I need to see more evidence. Dude, somebody should have showed up and shown you all the European studies on the subject. What a moron. You're our governor. You're a moron, dude. A total sellout. A total sellout to the progressive caucus. Makes no sense. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Democrats should uh, fucking get a life and focus on something that matters for the people of our home state. Half of these people probably aren't even native Vermonters anyway. That might be part of the fucking problem. That's about all. Peace out.